I started, I started thinking, I would like to write a list of 100 things I crave. And I thought it'd be really easy. <laughs> so I start writing, and when I got to 30, I just stopped. And it took me several years. I started adding a couple things each year because I didn't want to write down chocolate and Doritos. <laughs> it wasn't about that. It was about real meaning. Who am I? And, I, and how do I want to be living my life? And so, and I did it in a very analog way, just writing on a piece of paper with no, nobody, no inspiration. No, I wasn't talking to anybody else about it. And I think that's why it took me so long. So today, I'm going to um, actually help you Okay, look, <laughs> technology here. Discover your top five cravings. So we're digging, I'm gonna just take you through a little mini taste of what I've been working on for several years, and we also have a six-week course coming up where we're gonna dive deep in the whole hundred things and, and really get into everything. But I, I wanted just to gather you today to, and give you a little taste of what it's like to do this kind of work. How many people here feel like they know themselves really well? Yes. I like that. Um, how many people are actually living their life exact, doing exactly what they want to be doing 24-7? Yes! Yay, Sarah. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my PowerPoint, which I hate PowerPoints, um, did not work because of this, that we couldn't get you to see it. So I have this like little PDF here that I'm showing you. Um, I wanted to read you a definition of crave. I've redefined what crave means. So this is I'm I'm, re, I'm brainwashing you to instead of what you thought crave meant, this is what we're going to be working on today. So crave is you revisited. It's what makes you who you are, and it's behind where you want to go. It's a yearning for more of you in your life and the practical desire to make that happen. You may have forgotten who you are, you may have lost you and want you back. You may be getting to know you for the first time. A craving is a simple clue to all of the above. A craving is the way you want it. A craving is the story of you. And I wanted just to, I, I have to take you through some of the cravings that I came up with. So my evolution of doing this is after I wrote about 30 things and then I couldn't think of anything more and so a year would go by and I started getting invited to a karaoke group with my girlfriends, a private one because I will not do public karaoke. And we went and we just all grabbed microphones and just sang and it became part of who I was. I was like, I just craved it and I wanted it every month and now if I don't get it I'm like come on where's our club and so then I would add that to the list you know that because there's new things that come into your life all the time too I, I started going to Amsterdam because I, I craved Amsterdam for a lot of reasons and I finally started um, craving Amsterdam and you know have you guys ever been there they ride bikes everywhere a little bit like Vancouver that's why I love Vancouver because this is such a biking town, and I'm coming here in a couple, um, a couple months, and I'm going to rent bikes and go all over the seawall. And I just, we can't really do that in Seattle because it's all hills. So I come here and get my little Amsterdam fix. Where I can, you know, I'm not like a, um, it, we're not, I'm not one of those cyclists that has to wear the spandex and everything. I just have to wear the regular clothes. And then we stop at the coffee bar, kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of riding around. But that, once we, we uh, went to Amsterdam, my husband and I rented the bikes. And we started going all over the city, and you just pull up to a stop sign with 30 other bikers. It's just the lifestyle. It's the, it's the culture of, of what they do there. And my husband and I turned into like giddy teenagers, and we've been together for 28 years. So it was like this, wow, we discovered something else that we had in common that we had no idea that we had in common. Um, it was like date day, you know, going with my husband around the city on the bike. So then I would add that to the list. I was just really paying attention to what really fed my soul, who I am, and I started to, But then I, I realized that this is ridiculous, why can't I get to 100? So then I broke it up, you know, do you guys like to use Excel? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm like very right brain, I get it, and then sometimes I get it just like list it out. So I got it on my, I put it on an Excel document, and I started um, putting it into categories. And once I put it into categories like your body and wellness and 
what we do for self-care. It was like, boom, I could write 100 things just in that area. I, you know, like, I, I was just stuck. I just, I just didn't have a role model. So, and then I take my business, because, you know, three quarters of my life is my business, and what do I love and crave about that? And it just started rolling out of me, so then I got over 100. But then I really wasn't living that way, even though I wrote it all down and spent the time. So I turned it all into a Pinterest board. I made it very visual. Because I'd have to like walk around and literally look at it. I don't know if you guys forget who you are, but I forget who I am on a daily basis. Because we get into that to-do list and oh my goodness, you know, like all that stuff you're supposed to be doing in life. And then I forget who I am a lot. And especially when you go through some hard times too. That's the easiest time to forget. And so I, I turned it into a Pinterest board and share some of that with you. Um, I call it the I Crave List and I give you all the I Crave List so you have that there. Um, I'll also, let me see if I'll read you the definition of an I Crave List. It's um, making an I Crave List is not the same as compiling a list of your personal values. It's not a bucket list, it's not a to-do list, it's not a shopping list. An I Crave List is a list of experiences, sensations, accomplishments, habits, interactions which make your mouth water with anticipation. And just to give you a little bit more on this, I've been, I've had a couple retreats where I take people really deep in this and I've been finding that a lot of people, when I ask them to, to do the brain dump and write things down, they tend to write down bucket list items. And I just wanted to make sure you guys knew the difference between a crave list and a bucket list. And basically a crave list is, and the difference is, are those things that, Craves are those things that really support your essence, that make your heart sing, that make you sing when life gets crazy. They are the rituals you honor and the little things you do every day. Bucket lists are the things that you dream of doing once in a lifetime. So you might want to jump out of an airplane. And it might not be who you are on a daily basis, but you want to do it once in a lifetime. So that's really not what we're talking about. We're talking about like the daily rituals that we would like to have in our life. And I'm going to just give you some samples. Um, this is my Pinterest board. And somehow I made it too big here. Hold on, let's see if I can figure out how to make it smaller. I don't even know if you can see it anyway. Well, I can't make it smaller. So, um, OK. This might seem like a weird thing, but I like silver shoes. Oh, look, I'm wearing silver shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's part of who I am. It's my style, and I really just like to look down and see my silver shoes. And they make me happy, and they feed my soul. And I just really, I, I really believe in owning your style in every area of your life. And so let's start with fashion and what you put in your house and where you go to coffee. Like, I specifically pick out my coffee bars and hang out there because I want to I just love it. And there's this new one here. It's called Ra Chi Chi. It's on Big Beatty. Is it Baby or Baby? Yes. So I'm so pumped about that place. And I went there today. I went there two weeks ago. And I'm going to come back up and just hang there because I just love being there. They got this graffiti on the wall. And it just reminds me that I'm in Amsterdam. <laughs> Sorry that I use your city to remind me of Amsterdam. <laughs> but I just like being there and just, just around me. So I think a lot about style and, and, and my environment, my surroundings. And making s'mores lands on my list, and I'm going to tell you the story about why there's marshmallows everywhere, but s'mores are, they mean to me connection. When you are, when you are around a campfire making s'mores with your friends, you're having a different conversation than you are at, at work or wherever else. You are, you're letting your hair down, there might be some drinking involved, whatever, but you are getting a little bit more real, you're getting more vulnerable with your friends, and that's the conversations I crave and what I want. So I, I started a business called Urban Campfire, because I'm not really a camper, so like we could put a, a candle on the table, and that's called Urban Campfire, and then we could start getting real. <laughs> like, here we go. Um, I crave train rides. There's just something about trains that I just love getting on a train. I love coming. Have you guys done the train from Seattle to Vancouver? It's the most beautiful train ride, if you haven't done it you should do it, because that would be a really easy thing for you to do. Vancouver, Seattle? Yes. It's, it's, as most of it's on the water, and it's just breathtaking. But um, I'd rather get on a train and do that and bring a magazine and just kind of be, be there than driving the car in between. It doesn't always happen, but it brings me back to traveling and creativity and adventure. And so anytime I get on a train, I'm, I'm there. Um, I love retreats for creativity. I, I like to get away. I feel like 
I just cannot be creative unless I get out of my to-do list, my daily life. I have to go to that coffee bar to actually be able to write. I have to go to the retreat to actually do some work that I want to do that I won't do any time else. So that's on my list. Now I put strawberries on here and they have to do with business for me. And strawberries mean something to me because I grew up on a strawberry farm. My grandparents moved to Marysville, Washington from Germany and started a strawberry farm so I grew up in the business. And so strawberries mean money. They mean like a livelihood. And I still sell strawberries today. We sell, we, we sell strawberry shortcake at all the local fairs. And between like May and um, October, I'm in a fair every weekend in, in around the Seattle area, schlepping shortcake. People stand in line and have me cash. And that is one of my craves, <laughs> is people standing in line and have me cash. <laughs> it's a really good thing. <laughs> I have a picture of me with cash <laughs> on my list. I'm just going to say it. I love cash. <laughs> so, um, strawberries mean that to me. They also have a huge meaning of, of my parents, and we have a ritual every year we go out into the, the fields and we pick the strawberries together. We're the, we're the very first ones that pick before we let the general public in, and that is a, like a ritual that we have, which I also crave rituals. The, those annual rituals that you do that every year have them in your life. I crave serendipity. Serendipity is amazing. Like, you are here. <laughs> We have a story. My friend Anne here uh, on the camera is, uh, she rode up with me from Seattle and like, let's go on a road trip so we can talk more in the car. And because um, I crave three hour coffee meetings, right? You can't get anything done in less than three hours. So she's like, I have a friend. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to see her while we're here because we're only just here for one day. And, and then she tells her she's going she's gonna to be at the roundhouse and she has a meeting until 4.30 and, and Janine. Janine says, guess what, I'm going to the Crave event, and that's why I couldn't see you until 4.30. But <laughs> serendipity, it happens wherever we go, and I love serendipity. I have this little picture because I went to New York, and I went to a women's conference, and I met this woman right here named Agapi, and she's Ariana Huffington's sister, and she spoke at the event, and I stood in line for an hour and a half to, her, to get her book signed, and I asked her to come and speak at my event in Seattle, and she ended up never been to Seattle in her life, so she came, and I met her through that whole thing we became friends and then she got me a major sponsor which then is now like a major sponsor of all of my events and it's like wow that that's happened through serendipity because I just decided to go to an event in New York and was open to like what's gonna happen here today who are we gonna meet so I love living my whole entire life that way uh, let's see I'll just I put my analog husband in here somebody wrote this kid this is not exactly what it looks like but kind of wears the round glasses <laughs> <laughs> and he's so analog, it's so funny. He said he invented Pinterest because he started with the wall of like pieces of paper and the pictures on the wall and everything. But um, so everything he did was very analog. And so anyway, I, I'm like, I crave my analog husband. He should be on here first, by the way. I crave PJ parties because they mean connection to me. There's my karaoke. I crave bringing new business ideas to life. If I'm not bringing a new idea to life, I am not happy that I, it's just not working. So here's the little Seattle Space Needle with marshmallows hanging from the top because I'll tell you the marshmallow story later, but I crave potlucks because I can, I love inviting people over and I don't cook. So <laughs> if I'm never going to be able to entertain if I don't do it. So I just like bring the food and we will, we will come together for connection. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of example and show you pictures of what I crave because I'm going to have you do this pretty soon. I want you to really, I'm going to have you do a brain dump pretty soon, and I want you to really start to think about this in all the areas of your life. I want you to um, identify, I want you to be very specific. So um, I said before, like some values, like maybe love or creativity or what's some other values? Um, freedom. Freedom. You know, those things we, we crave and we love and it's who we are. It's not what I'm asking you to do because those, like, creativity is one of my highest values. And, but I want to have creativity in every single area of my life. So I'll have creativity in my business. I'll have creativity. I mean, not creativity. Did I say creativity? I meant curiosity. Curiosity is my highest value. So... In my adventure and travel world, I want to be curious. I want to be curious about all of you today. When I'm with my friends, I'm curious. Everywhere I go, I'm just a curious person. I just ask a lot of questions. I should be a journalist. So that's just part of who I am. So that's, I just want to give you the difference between that and, so if I was to be specific about curiosity, I would say 
I like to have three hour coffee dates with my girlfriends because I like to ask them about everything they've been doing in the last three months that I haven't seen them and really get real with each other. So that's the specific part of curiosity. Um, sometimes it's hard to think, so if you think back at your childhood, like what were you doing in your childhood, because I think our craves just came natural when we were little kids, and so you can think through that if you're having a hard time thinking about it. I made a little crave pie for you, and that's all on your list, so it's the different areas of your life. And the reason why it's around circle with six, um, I got obsessed with pie a few weeks ago. Do you know when we had that pie day, P.I. day? <laughs> that was what, how many weeks ago? I don't remember, it was in like March. March, it's to the, what's the equation? Yes. 14. Yeah, for March 14th, 15th, and it was, you know, in 100 years or something, we're having this pie day. Well, then we had this big pie store open on pie day in Seattle, and it was, I was obsessed with pie. So for two weeks, I was making pie at home, and it, when I kept the pie, um, I don't like eight pieces because that's too small, so I like, I, I like a piece of pie that's like six pieces, and that is why we have a six I just want to tell you the reason why there's six categories. Because I had five before that, and I had to change it to six. Um, I'm sure there's lots more categories in your life. So if, if I haven't covered everything you can think of in your life, don't, don't just don't limit it to this. And like I don't have like spirituality on here because it's public. In my mind, it's like almost everything. And so, but if there's something that's not on here, please don't. Let, I mean, this is just giving you ideas, like to think about your connections and your relationships and your friendships. Your adventure life, your creativity, what do you do for creativity? What, what do you like to do for travel? Um, your style, we talked about that earlier, surroundings, who do you like to be around, what do you like to be around? Are you a nature person, do you like to go out in the forest and walk in the trees and that fuels you? Um, what's your impact? What are you doing in this world to impact it? Um, what are you doing to give back? What kind of service are you doing? Um, and the whole body wellness self-care, you know, what are you doing to take some time off or um, you know, just keeping that whole part of your balanced self going so that we can stay alive, basically. <laughs> We're a little bit busy, so we need to kind of pay attention to ourselves. Um, and the whole business work wealth area, what does that mean to you? So I, that's just on your sheet at all times for you to kind of take a look at it, and I think it's time. And I just want to kind of be in silence for a little bit, and I just want you to do a brain dump. And I mean, there's only like 20 lines on there, so I'm not asking you to do 100 here today. I'm just saying, like, you can write down 5, 10, 15, 20 things, whatever comes out. So let's just take 10 minutes now and do that. Oh, does anybody have questions first? Does everybody feel good about this? Or any comments, questions? Okay, you got it. You got this. Go. <laughs>
but and then it just comes to a head about two or three months down the road and then I'm really angry because I yeah. didn't do certain things. I'm, obviously some things I do <coughs> and I love them, but there are some deep ones as I'm getting further into it. I'm like, wow, like I'm not doing any of these things and I love them. Yeah. Are you no, I found it really hard actually. Did you? Yeah, it's um I found stuff on my list. Some of it was specific, but a lot of it was abstract concepts. It was it was really hard to unlock myself. Like, you know, and I was more general things like um, love companionship, right? Or financial stability or you know, like um, and then got really some of things were more specific, like things I actually know about myself that I like and I want in my life. You know, like pretty clothes and um, spa time and you know, meditating at English Bay and you know, mm -hmm. like so it was I found it really hard to draw out more specifics. Remember it took me eight years. Mm -hmm. I gave you ten minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you did really good. I'm glad you're here. To, to get specific, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciated that. So it's more like, you know, you can say meditation, but I said you know, meditation moments when I'm walking in the forest because right. I'm always going to go out walk my dog, but I might forget to do to just stop and have that moment. Mm -hmm. So I like the reminder for that. Mm -hmm. What are you laughing? The one out there. I'm asking if she can drop something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a number one. <laughs> Who else? Who else has comments about how this felt? And did anybody have any surprises? I want to hear, like, did any surprises come out? I'm going to put on my fridge, so when I'm like, I need to spray things right there to have my fridge somewhere visible. Yeah. And then I go, oh, I don't know what to unboard. Like, oh, let's, let's hear it. Let's try this. Yeah, no, seriously. Sometimes I just have no idea what I want to do today. Like, mm -hmm. uh, no, I know. <laughs> no, I did a big event last year, and I had it. I took a day off. I made myself take a day off the next yeah. day. I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna take a day off. I've just been working on this insanely for like the last four months. Yeah. 24/7. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do with myself, yeah. and so I pulled up my Pinterest board. Yeah. yeah. I went for a bike ride. I called a friend. I yeah. went out to dinner, and yeah. I did all That's my craves. Yeah. I'm calling it multi. What do we call it? Multi craving. Yeah. Instead of um, multitasking, yeah. that's our uh -huh. multi craving, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're tweeting that. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I found it difficult um, in the beginning, and I realized, oh, I'm more in my head. Yeah. And, and then when I just let it kind of flow from the inside, it just worked. I could stop right. And you went straight to the gut. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I realized that a lot of the stuff I have, I, I get a lot of, and that was very validating. It's like, oh, I do that. Yeah, I do that too, and I got that. And so it was, it's, I mean, some of it's like Paris, so I don't get that as much, but mm -hmm. some of it's moss and ferns and trees, I get that a lot. So mm -hmm. Mountains, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hold on. Um, my was, I don't know if the Say that again? Mm -hmm. A cruise for free, mm -hmm. but doing readings. You know, all of my service on a cruise, and then I trip. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's possible. So, is it, is it, do you go on cruises? No, but that's something that I create for. Mm -hmm. But I love when we can bear it, so I just put it in my hand in the summer, so I can create the water. Mm -hmm. You want to create food on a cruise. Mm -hmm. You want to create a little spirit. You want to bigger. Yes, and I would pay for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to back up what Janine said because I have a lot of things on here that I do do, but I still feel like in order to do them, I have to doubt, um, justify. Yeah. So I've got a lot of these things that I love doing, and I do do them, but somehow there's something that keeps coming up, like I have to justify why I'm allowed to do those things. Like maybe maybe some things that are required, you know, we only have so many um, hours a day. Mm -hmm. And um, I often feel very told, not just by my own family, but by, by uh, external, no, no, my family, I'm the, I have a big family. <laughs> like this, 
be up they don't want to spend time with me, of course they do. But in order to do it, it's like when you talk about the three hour coffees, it's got to be a three hour conversation with each of them. So I, I love them, but it's not their names didn't come up on my list of things I create to do. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah. Can I trouble you? Can I get a water? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Danielle, you want to tell your story about um, Which one? when you first did this. And yes. like, it's similar to remind me of what Sarah just said, that you were... Yeah, I, um, when I first did it at the event of Melody's, I, I realized that um, there were things I, were, I was doing that I really loved, but when I started looking at what I craved, that the, some of the things I was doing every week and putting a lot of my time in, um, even though I loved doing them, weren't on my craig list. And it was really powerful for me because I realized I, I only have so much time and so I want to devote it to things that are really speaking to the very, you know, deepest part of me. So I actually, I, so I was in um, a choir. We danced and sang and it was really fun and I loved it, but it wasn't on my craig list. So I, I actually immediately, I, I stopped it and I started redirecting my time towards other things that were um, actual cravings. Um, one of which was just that I realized that I really needed intellectual stimulation and I started looking into master's degrees. And, and that was really because of asking myself that question, what do I crave? As opposed to, you know, what do I love? There was a difference for me. I mean, this can be a little bit different for everybody. Um, so thank you for sharing and thank you for indulging me in doing this exercise. I uh, want to tell you a little story about my nervous breakdown and, and why there's marshmallows all over everything. Um, so in 2012, I was over in Amsterdam and I was doing, I had just launched my Crave book, my, my Craving Success book, and I was out talking to people about my lessons learned and I had just launched our Crave Amsterdam book and I was pretty much on a high. If you ask me, um, if I was if I was going to die tomorrow, I, I was okay. For the first time in my life, I could say that because I've been like striving all my life for something, and it wasn't very you know I was, I was always discontented. But um, for the first time in my life, I was just like I could die tomorrow. I'm okay. But I had no idea that I was a few months away from the biggest breakdown of my life. So there you go. I, I I went to Amsterdam. I got two phone calls. One from my printer saying you owe me sixty thousand dollars. What happened? And I just was I, I wasn't looking at my financial life close enough. Um, you know how I said I didn't like to manage people. I was managing people instead of managing my finances. And sometimes when I didn't pay attention to my finances, things fell off. I had no idea. I I was so far behind. Um, I got another call that somebody else was ripping off my brand and they were putting all the money in their bank account. And I needed a lawyer in twenty four hours. And I'm in Amsterdam. And, between those two things, I pretty much went down. I, I've never experienced a nervous breakdown before, but I just started shaking, went in the fetal position, and I went down. I didn't even tell my husband what was going on. I just like, I just like rubbed my feet. <laughs> Sometimes your husband just can't help you. Um, it's just easier, you know, because like, people, when you tell other people, sometimes they just want to help you and realize it's not the answer, so I just really needed him to rub my feet. <laughs> so for, I, I told him like six months later. I went down, I came back to Seattle, and I went down for a whole year. I just crawled in bed, and every day at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, my husband would say, you need to get out of bed today, and I'm like, uh-uh. I have no creativity, nothing in me, I'm, I'm spent. I did turn fucking 50 that year, and um, it did not do me any favors. Um, Oprah said those were the best years of your life, and I wasn't mine. And, uh, I, you know, when you're in the worst year and you turn 50, this is just not good. You know, I, I just really hope everybody that turns 50 is there in their best year. <laughs> you don't experience what I experienced. <laughs> but it took me a couple of years to get out of that. So what happened at the end of the year is my friends got me together and said, this is enough. You, you need your mojo back. We need you back. Um, what do you love? And I said flash dance and marshmallows. And, you know, I said it in a very flippant way, but I do love marshmallows and <laughs> flash dance. And just like, how can I make a business out of that? How's this going to get me out of my funk? And I started thinking, because I love the mashup of things. And so I took dancing and s'mores and said, what does that mean to me? And with the campfire, sitting around the campfire, having the meaningful conversations, dancing, fun, 
And then I thought, well, we need to add some TED Talk action in because women can't just, they're not going to come to some fluffy, dancey thing. <laughs> they would, but that wasn't, I needed something a little bit more intellectual. So I threw in this TED Talk action, and I called it Urban Campfire, and 500 women came, and I saw the light again. And it was like, it was what it took. It was my friends that got me out, and it was me, um, like, what do I love? And it was me going back to my list. It was pulling it out. Because I totally forgot. I had already done a hundred things by then. I was, I mean, I already had it. I had it in my Pinterest board. But I lost it. Like, I, when you get depressed like that, you just, like, nothing is good. So I started looking at that list again and going, oh, yeah, I'm kind of a cool person. I forgot that. I got some cool stuff going on in my life. And I forgot that. So I, that was a big thing for me to get, to pull me out and get me back out and to remind myself. I have taken this so far now, like you guys, I have this on an Excel document again, and I have put daily, weekly, monthly, um, semi-weekly, and I've, I've rated every single thing on, on my list, and I tell myself, like, do I want this in my life daily, weekly, monthly? I set the rules. <laughs> like, I have to have massage in my life, or I will be kind of an irritated person. And I went, that whole year, I probably got one or two massages in the whole year. So now I'm like, I have to at least have, I mean, I certainly want one once a week, maybe daily would be nice, but I put realistically once a month to make me happy. And so I made that a monthly thing. That's the rule I set this year. And I'm literally tracking it. You guys, I got Fitbit in January. <laughs> and I, I just walked already 12,000 steps today. And um, I've been walking 10,000 steps a day, and I've been learning from this Fitbit. It's like tracking my movement, I decided to track my craves and really see, am I living my life this way? And I'm proud to say, um, I've only missed two things so far this year. I didn't go out to dinner with my husband in March, really bad. You know, I wasn't tracking it the way I'm tracking it. And I didn't have fresh flowers in my life for three months, and now they're in my life every day. Uh, and there's a, there's a meaning behind that because they make me smile and my husband buys them for me. And, like there's all this meaning around fresh flowers. It might sound like not a very meaningful thing, but it really means a lot to me. So I noticed I did not have them in my life even though I have it on the list. And so, I mean, everybody's different. I, and I just seem to respond to doing it this way, and that's how I've decided to live every hour of my life on my terms. Um, so I, wanted, I just wanted to tell you that story, and um, I wanted you to take some time, and now that you've done the brain dump, I want you to take the other sheet with the five marshmallows, because now you know what they mean. <laughs> so I have this thing called, What's Your Marshmallow? Because I, you know, I'll tell you one just little story before I um, let you go off on this one. The reason why I came up with What's Your Marshmallow is because I, I met a guy, have you guys heard of Startup Weekend? What? Startup Weekend. It's where the geeks go, about a hundred of them at a time, and they start a business from Friday night to Sunday night. It's an actual conference. Mm -hmm. And they like, come up with an idea, 10 people are on a team over here. They take the hundred people, and there's 10 teams in a room, and they all like, let's start a business. It's usually some kind of an app that they can start in three days. And um, I met the, the guy that, put, that started it, and um, he told me, I want you to come to this because we need more women, and we need, when, when, when you start up a business, you need more than just coders. You need like the business people, and you need the accountants and the lawyers. You need everybody, so please come. So I went and got obsessed with it. I even brought it to Vancouver once. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I have a startup chunky. I'm like, oh, they don't have it in Vancouver, and I can drive up there and do it. So, but then he quit somehow. He just like went away. He just, he had a partner, and I'm like, where'd he go? And I went to a, an event about a year later, and there he was at this event. I ran into him at the happy hour. I'm like, Clint, what happened to you? Why did you leave Startup Weekend? What's going on? He goes, you won't believe it. I went to Spain, and I, I participated in this tomato throwing thing, where everybody throws tomatoes at each other, like thousands of people, and they're all red from head to toe. And he goes, I just thought it was the coolest thing. So I brought it back to America, and I did it my style. And I had an event in Colorado. I went to the fairgrounds and got like, I just need the parking lot. I went and got two truckloads of almost rotten tomatoes. I sold tickets for 50 bucks a piece. I got beer in a band. Like I just had a band, I had them throw the tomatoes at each other. I got some beer for them. And I had a band, it's a three hour event. They all paid me 50 bucks, hundreds of people came. 
and I got on the front page of the Colorado newspaper. You know, so analog. He went from like so super techie to like really down and dirty analog. Now, I sell strawberry shortcake, right? So I'm really into the down and dirty types of businesses. So I was just, I was just literally sitting there going, I, I had my mouth open that he was telling me the story. And I gotta tell you, I was super jealous because he was lit up. And he had found, I call it his tomato. So I walked out of that event and I went, what's my tomato? This dude had it, like he was lit. And I wanted that. And so I told somebody the story and they're like, well, you got the marshmallow. <laughs> so this is where this background comes. It's like, what's your marshmallow? What's your tomato? So I want you to take a few more minutes now and I want you to look at your list and think about what are the five things that you'd like to pull out of this as kind of your top five things. I, this changes a lot. So a few weeks ago, my top fives were walking with my husband. It's super important for me to spend time with him. Brought that up a few times. And I, the way that I can do it the best is if we go for a walk because then I don't bring my phone and I'm not staring at a screen and I could be with him. And so we can take our one hour walk around our neighborhood and that is like one of my top things. Uh, bringing new business ideas to life. I'm like all about business and if I'm not doing that, then I'm not happy. So that's on my top five. Nothing scheduled days. That, <laughs> I want one of those like once a week, but if I get one once a month, I'm happy. Just like where I have nothing scheduled. Um, Rituals. Rituals are really important to me. I love to make them up. I made a marshmallow ritual up a few years ago where we made a, I make a marshmallow wreath during the holidays and then on January 1st we burn them. So it's called Urban Burn. <laughs> and that's my new ritual. Um, and sit, I love to walk around a city with my headset in. That, I get so much creativity when I do that. So I just love to just wander any city, anywhere, whether it's my own city or any other city, and put my headset in and just go. So that's my top five. Is that helpful to get really specific? Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily something that you're doing every day or every week, but it could be something once a month or... Yeah, or my, my rituals are once a year. year. Okay. If this is who you are, it's in your life. Those, I melt my marshmallows once a year, and it's part of who I am, but I only do it once a year. Here's, here's Christine. She, she put time to write because she is a writer and she craves time to write and she hardly gets any of that. So she has that on here. She has a day of spontaneous planning. She loves to be spontaneous. Um, early morning workouts are just part of her life. And what is that? Paradigm, Paradigm busting coffee dates. And a hug she wasn't expecting. Just kind of be, just be aware of time. 
so that everybody has five minutes. Don't you know one person can't take the whole 20 minutes. And go around and share your top five and share your why. Why do they matter to you? You to put it on Instagram or Facebook and put I crave clarity as a hashtag, and then we can start to see each other's hashtags and start to support each other. How did it feel? to share your top craves with possible strangers. I know some of you came with friends, but a lot of you don't know each other in the group. What did it feel like to share this with each other? But why do you have that kind of frame, frame of mind? Because a lot of people don't actually share yeah. their stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to know how it felt. Like, did it feel it good? Like, what, did you hold back? Um, did you have things in common? Did any serendipity happen? We had a great coach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Our facilitator well, was great. What, what yeah. happened over here? Well, I've been on the retreat, so yes, I she went really deep. deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I explained how um, I spent two days on this and really trying to dig deep into what a craving is. Um, so one of mine is playing poker with my girlfriends. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. And I played last night. And the reason why it's on my list is because it's girlfriend time. But it's also because I love the game. I love to win money. <laughs> and I came so close. That's why I'm saying in our I almost got all the chips. <laughs> and then my girlfriend won it. And we laugh. And we laugh. And it's a special time. We've been doing this for and you might think, oh, okay, that's okay. Well, trying to get people together these days, yeah. so when we miss them a I'm like, girls. <laughs> and they all agree. And then we all get busy trying to schedule our time. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure they, they would put that on. Yeah, that's called multi craving. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else want to share any, any kind of serendipity that happened? Did you have anything in common with each other? She plays six degree of separation. Yeah, exactly. Mm, I feel like it was very empowering because when we actually put our craves out loud, it seems like you know, it seems like it's possible. Mm -hmm. Like everything we crave, we can actually make happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see that out there. Like that. Yeah. yeah, I love. And what is your name again? Mari. So I love what Mari said. She said, this is like the candy store. Yeah. <laughs> and you get so, big list. Yeah, like the marshmallows in your candy store. And so I drew this like little, you know, the twisty candy thing yeah. around your circle. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I feel. Like if it, you know, it was confirming because these are, I think I'm old enough to know myself pretty well after paying a lot of money to go to grad school <laughs> and this kind of stuff. So I'm I'm like, okay, if I don't know myself right now, then I'm really in trouble. But you can I can never get enough of reconfirming. And and even though I know myself that it's knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the knowledge is one thing, however, the living into it is another. So I know what I crave, but am I am I living into the craving? Mm -hmm. And that's a whole life journey kind of thing. So it, it was really fun to think of it as my candy store my marshmallows, and the idea that I am a visual communicator, but I don't really use visual communication for myself. So I love the idea of other people, but not for yourself. Yeah, and I love create this idea of Instagram and just finding the visual representations now. And that's what I'm excited about doing next. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna make find pictures and use that to reinforce it, so I can live into it more. It's fun. Thank you. It made me feel alive to talk about this and dig into it a little bit more. It's a very enlivening, and it I just it it's like an echo of what I feel when I'm doing the things that are the things I crave. <laughs> so yeah, it just again reinforces if I feel alive just talking about it. That's why I crave them. I feel alive when I do it. Just do it. Just do it. Exactly. To quote a famous one. So smart. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Mm. 
Well, one thing that was definitely a common feature across at least one training for, I uh, have to I'd say at least for this table, but I have to throw a guess for everybody, was a craving of uh, companionship. Uh, at least one or two of them, I mean, they could have been specific to individuals, but for the most part, there was always the sense of feeling a connection with somebody. So that was, that's something that I think everybody, unless you're a psychopath, usually mm -hmm. falls under. <laughs> There was some cravings over here of wanting to be by yourself, but that was yeah. because we're with so many people all the time, and it was like, uh, you know, like our, having our little cave time is also a good thing for the balance. Mm. But yes, I, I would say that's very common. Thank you for sharing that. For the last year and a half, I've done about seven large dinner parties across the around the world, actually, for about 150 people each. And I'd say the biggest thing that I found from that was most people. Um, don't have very many friends, and um, and that's probably their biggest complaint in life is that they don't have very many people that they can turn to, ask for help, um, that they don't have that companionship, and so it, it you are not nobody's alone in this area. And um, actually, I congratulate you all for coming to something like this today because this is a very vulnerable thing to come to, and then I ask you all these really personal questions, and then I make you tell each other about it. <laughs> I mean, that's a major thing to do, so give yourself a hand for that. <laughs> so I hope you got you gained a little bit of something today. I, I'd love to get your feedback and hear like if this taste of Crave um, satisfied anything for you today. I, I My biggest wish for you is that you go out into the world and you start living this way and you take your little marshmallows and put them up on your refrigerator and take pictures of it and start taking pictures everywhere you go and, and, and looking at that on a daily basis and, and connecting with people and talking about this. I um, really appreciate you coming out today to do this. I, I actually have, have stolen a couple things from you guys. <laughs> this is why I love doing a lot of this work. And I decide, I try it on. Do I really want that because she wants it? And now I want it, but, or is that really, would that be really good for me too? So, um, so thank you that you're helping me also continue. I continue to oh. add to my list. I actually, I felt like I made a mistake by doing 100 things I crave on Pinterest because I couldn't, I didn't do it by category. So now I've got five Pinterest boards and I put it all in category. Now i got to add six. This is a little taste of our upcoming six week program. We're doing a, I'm very, I'm so excited about this. We're um, starting May 5th, uh, six Tuesday nights. Um, all over the world, we have facilitators that are going to facilitate small, intimate, six-person think tanks. And so we're all going to be doing this together, but we're all also doing it in a very intimate. So you're, it's an experience like you just had for the 20 minutes where you're sharing with each other. We're going we're, we're to take this and it, it's going to be on steroids. Um, I did two retreats last year. What I did with my retreats, like Nancy said over here, is I just kind of broke them apart into a six-week program. I've been doing masterminds and think tanks for years. And what I found is we are best when we get together and help each other. You know, we can think for each other more easier. Uh, we help each other easier. We gain friendships that way. It's a very intimate thing to do. Um, so when I'm not in some kind of think tank, I'm not feeling so great. Um, but so I also know that we're really busy. And to ask you to come six weeks in a row, like six Tuesday nights in a row, if I asked every one of you, you would tell me that you're traveling, you're going to get sick, <laughs> something's going to happen, and you're not going to come all, all six. So I, I think I've designed the perfect dream six weeks where we've done four weeks as a conference call and two weeks in person. And what we're going to do is we're going to go deep with, we're going to start with the inventory of our life. We're going to go through a whole entire life because when I wrote my book over 30 years, all my aha moments came out of it. It was, wow, I found out that I don't keep it simple. Every time I've made a mistake in my life because I've complicated life. And when I, when I noticed, when I, saw, I started seeing my patterns from looking at my whole life, when I kept it simple, the, key, the KISS theory, keep it simple sister, of, you know, I don't like to say stupid, but um, I found that the only times I've been successful is when I kept it simple. I did not know that until I started writing out my whole life and seeing the patterns. I also like to flip things. I like, flipping is one of my favorite words. So it's like, okay, if something's not working, let's flip it. That is a pattern I didn't even know I had until I started looking at that. It's so important to know your non-negotiables and just to know in every decision that you make who you are and why you're going to make that decision. And, and, and own it. 